Uh, and first of all, where are you meeting these women? Well, first of all, I live in Atlanta, so we gotta we gotta highlight that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Atlanta, Atlanta, low key for the streets. Like we gotta talk about that. You know what I mean? We gotta <laughs> we gotta understand that. You know. But I've lived in Texas, um, from New York, born and raised. So I, I've I've been in a lot of different cities. A lot of men out here in Atlanta will only talk to a girl if she has sex with other women. Right. Heard Just that on, a lot. On a, re- on a very basic yep. level. Um, in Atlanta, yeah. you meet you might meet a woman and she has a great job and she's a scammer on the side. The most put together woman. Like, <laughs> a scammer you, on the side. You a scammer. You know what I mean? Or you meet her and she has a girlfriend and she, or she wants yeah. to have a girlfriend. So these, yeah. these are the things that, that goes on in Atlanta. And they're the most put together church going, invite you to their church, first conversation type of people. I'm the Terrace R. Weekend, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latera R. Whitfield. Listen, thank y'all so much for rocking with me on this journey. Uh, you guys have been finding so much value in this content, and I greatly appreciate you. Uh, listen, if you still haven't subscribed to the podcast, what are you waiting for? Stop shacking up with us and hit that subscription bell right now. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. And um, like this video and share it. Man, I met this brother a couple of months ago. I was trying to get him into uh, Dallas for the podcast, but you know, um, flights have been absolutely crazy, especially uh, especially a lot of y'all flying out of Atlanta. Um, this brother resides in Atlanta. And um, so I said, you know what? I didn't want to wait another minute. I want to get him on as soon as possible. Such a such a dope brother. Uh, without further ado, I want to introduce my brother, Dozier Azima. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Thank you for having me. You see, I try to I try to go into my little Nigerian accent. I don't know how well you I did. You had a little bit. You, Dozier was good. When you said Azima, you struggled, but it's all right, though. You know. All right, Azima, Azima, Azima. Don't make me eczema. Now. <laughs> <laughs> like eczema. He said eczema. But listen, Dozier, listen, I've been wanting to have you on this podcast. Uh, such a dope brother. I sometimes jump in on your lives on Instagram and I'd be like, okay, this brother over here is spitting some knowledge. I love that you're transparent. So Dozier, we've had some really transparent conversations and you're a 30 year old man. You're a virgin. You're an attractive dude. It's not hard for you to get the attention of women. You find, but in our conversation, you said something interesting. You said it's hard to find a wife. So we're going to call this episode, It's Hard to Find a Wife. So now, Dozier, I think you may be stepping into some stuff when you say that. Right. So why do you say it's hard for you to find a wife, brother? Um. Well, honestly, I'm going to first start off and talk about myself, honestly. um, I had to first realize that just because you got yourself together, maybe business-wise, work-wise, money-wise, and you've gotten your body to look, look a certain way doesn't mean you automatically get a shoe in to be a good husband or a good man. So once I started working on my character and um, just wondering things that women have checked me on in my past, um, that's when I really started looking like, all right, I'm definitely ready to pursue marriage. And that at that point, when I finally accepted that I'm ready to pursue marriage is when I realized this thing is not as easy as I thought for men, you know? <laughs> Like, I would have never thought it would have been as hard as, as it is right now. So why you say hard? What do you find in it? What's hard? What's hard um, about it? Honestly, when I say hard, is um, it's it's the mindset of a lot of women. You know, um, um, you know, I'm not even going to say most. I've met some amazing women and it just didn't work out. However, generally speaking, and I know other men can agree with me, you know, when we go out, when we meet people, depending on where we meet them, really doesn't matter. But really the foundation of... The woman, when you meet them, it's not the same level. Or I can't marry that. Oh, okay. He said, you know? "Okay, hold on. I'm gonna take a step back." You said right. something a minute a minute ago where you said that it's some things that women told you about yourself. Right. What was those? What What were some of those things that were uh, hindrances in your past relationships? Uh, well, communication. First off, okay. uh, I've realized that you can have fun with a woman. But just because you can make a woman smile and have fun doesn't mean it's okay. So women expect consistency. You know what I mean? They, they expected me to um, just be there when they needed me. And I'm not going to hold you. Honestly, I was really chilling on my own wave. 
And I had yeah. to understand, I had to really understand that, you know, they expect me to be there at all times, always there to support them or just um, always there to respond to their messages and, and, you know, contact them. So it was something I had to improve on. So you was the type of guy that a woman would say, I mean, they're, they're calling you and texting you and you wouldn't respond the whole day or how bad was it, Dozier? You know how people be using that excuse like your text game is trash? My my text game is terrible. Like if you see my phone, I got notifications and I'm like, I'm not gonna answer all these texts, you know? It's just <laughs> I was like, I'm I'm a big person. Hey, call me if you want to talk to me. If you text me, yeah. at least I can get to you when I can. Facts. But but, but from, from a communication standpoint, where you were the are you the type that actually called the chick that you're interested in? Or are you waiting oh, for her to call you all the time? I definitely am. I definitely am. I don't know if you remember in the past, there was something that was going on on Shade Room when they made posts on different type of men. <laughs> and uh, they said, like, this is like the bad. They explained different types of bad men. And they, they explained one type of man who was fun. Like, he was a one, one you want to go out with, you want to spend all your time with. But he's inconsistent. He's inconsistent. Whenever you see him, it's all fun. When he's gone, he's gone. I read that and I looked at myself and I was like, yo, that's me. And these are negative traits of men. And I was like, that's me for sure. You know, that's good that you're honest enough to admit your faults. Have you ever said that to a woman and apologized to a woman that may have been complaining? You say, ain't nothing wrong with me. And then you had to go back and eat humble pie and say, you know what? You're right about that. Absolutely. I've absolutely went back on women and just apologized for for the way I was. And um, just the way I did it, because honestly, it's almost it's almost a fear of committing in a way mm. when you're like that. It's it's mm. it's a way we as men act and we really we really fear committing. So we have fun, but we go by the way because it really I'm not really locked down because I do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like my wings are always spread if I'm not consistent. I kind of leave it at a safe base. And I had to realize it was a fear of committing. How long ago was that? When did you come to this come Shit. to Jesus moment? This come to Jesus moment had to have been maybe about maybe about two years ago. I can say that I can honestly was like, all right, because I came out of a relationship and I was a little kind of like it was a little messed up. So I was kind of playing for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, all right, OK, I, I get what's going on. <laughs> you know, how you, you know, how you come out of a relationship. It's kind of you got to get yourself together a little bit. Yeah. So when you so when you did that after that moment happened, when did you start dating? Or let me ask you, are you dating with intentions? Because you said it's hard to find a wife. So that means you have to first be dating with intentions. Are you yeah. dating with intentions? So, yes, I'm absolutely dating with intentions. Um, I started dating with intention for real, for real, about a year after our relationship. And then that was when I got called out. And then I really had to put myself together and understand the, the type of man that I, I'm choosing to be for these women. You know what I mean? Or for the wife that I want to have in the future. Good, good. And so now since your your focus have changed, you've gotten clarity. Mm -hmm. What has that experience been in these dating streets? And that's when the dirt hit the fan. You feel me? That's when I woke up and was like, bro, <laughs> I'm out here. Like, it just doesn't make sense. So. At that point, that's when I started dating women and um, just having general conversations. I'm talking about first day conversations. And these women would be like, yeah, I'm an atheist or, you know, me and Crystal's are best friends. And I'm like, sweetheart, I'm a Christian. You feel me? Like, <laughs> it's not the same. We not. But the surprising thing is we want to stay together and work it out. And I'm like, we don't align foundationally. Good. And it's really the foundations that I've realized that, you know, a lot of women on the surface are great, beautiful, fine, all of this stuff. They're fun yes. too, but the foundations don't align. So what 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 has it been like? Uh and first of all, where are you meeting these women? Well, first of all, I live in Atlanta. So we gotta we gotta highlight that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Atlanta, Atlanta low key for the streets. Like we gotta talk about that. You know what I mean? We gotta <laughs> we gotta understand that. You know, but I've lived in Texas. Um, from New York, born and raised, so I, I've, I've been in a lot of different cities, and um, I'm meeting them. Honestly, I meet them at networking events. Um, um, really upscale. I, I tend to go to some upscale events, really, to, just because it's better quality. Maybe at a at a nice bar if it's some low key spot. Uh, you know, that's where I tend to meet somebody. I tend to I tend to go places. I'm not I'm not at home. 
I'm going. So why? So why you say Atlanta's for the streets? <laughs> look, <laughs> anybody lives in Atlanta. Look, Atlanta, Atlanta. The mindsets or oh, Atlanta, they call it Black Hollywood. So yeah. people are coming here to impress. They're coming here to really sell their soul and do whatever. So yeah. on a general basis, if you meet somebody in Atlanta, a lot of times when you talk to them, and this is men and women. On yeah. like, I mean, I got dudes just even friends, the lifestyle. I'm like, what do you mean? This doesn't make no any sense. You know what I mean? Like you mix up people need to there's people that listen to this podcast all over the world. So let's put uh, a context around it. What do you mean by the lifestyle? What lifestyles okay. are we talking about? The lifestyle of monogamy, whatever, polygamy, a lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of men out here in Atlanta will only talk to a girl if she has sex with other women. Right. Heard Just that on, a lot. On, a, on a very basic yep. level. Um in Atlanta, yeah. you meet you might meet a woman and she has a great job and she's a scammer on the side. The most put together woman. Like <laughs> a scammer on the side. You a scammer. You know what I mean? Or you meet her and she has a girlfriend and she, or she wants yep. to have a girlfriend. So these yeah. these are the things that, that goes on in Atlanta. And they're the most put together church going, invite you to their church, first conversation type of people. So, so, so what, what has your experience been? So you've been out on a date with a girl, and then how does she spring this on you? So from living in Atlanta, I caught really quick, you need to ask the sexuality question first, early. Because I, <laughs> I was getting bamboozled initially when I'd be on a date with a girl, and the girl walked by, and she'd be like, who is that? She's beautiful. And I'm like, yo, you said that with your chest, sweetheart. You feel me? Like, you said that a little strong. Like, like you, you all right? I didn't, I'm telling you, I didn't really notice initially. And then she, I, I asked questions like, yo, you into girls? And she's like, well, I'm kind of. And I'm like, bro, this, this city is goofy. You know, like, like, and it's, it's not even, I'm not coming for it. It's more the fact of, and I say this all the time, you cannot expect monogamy from men and you like women at the same time. Wait, are, you, met, are, they, are they expecting that though? They are. Which is mind blowing to me. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. A plus B don't equal C here. Like, so so you tell me it's not like these women are liking women. They saying, "Hey, we can do threesomes and stuff like that." That's what they're saying, but threesomes is not monogamy. So you can't tell me. I've never heard a man who talked to a woman who likes women and he didn't want a threesome. It doesn't make sense. Do you know what I mean? You can't yeah. tell me you want a faithful man who's not a cheater. And you like women, and you want to add a woman in a relationship at some point. Where's the math? You tell, me say that. you tell me they say that. They say I want a man that's monogamous, but I would allow him to entertain other women while we're together. What they, they still- actually, what they actually say is, I want a man. I want to marry a man. That's who I want to be with. That's who I want to have a family with. But I have sex with women occasionally. This is exactly what they tell me. But are they inviting you into that atmosphere with them? Low key, absolutely. Okay. And for me, honestly, one, I want to honor God, and two, I want to be monogamous. Yes. So I don't want to put myself in the challenge that I'm not. I may not win. You know what I mean? It's it's not worth it. It's not worth. Wait, say so you may not win. You may not win what? I mean, first off, I'm not gonna hold you. I'm a jealous dude. Whoever I'm with, yeah. that's who I'm with. You, I'm not gonna be out here flying out and you telling me you and your girlfriend having fun. In whose house? Not you know what I mean. Not it's not happening. So I like what's mine is mine. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 hard out here in Atlanta. In Atlanta specifically, the world ain't like this. Atlanta's different. Atlanta's different. You know, the world is so not. You lived like in New this. York. You lived in New York. You lived in L.A. You lived I lived in, in New York. I lived in New York. I lived in Dallas. I lived in Bermuda before, and um, now I'm in Atlanta. And you said you everywhere you've been, you've never met women like the women at Atlanta. Yeah. I thought New York was the worst. By all means, it doesn't touch Atlanta. The women in Atlanta, by far, by far, are the worst. And you know what? I won't even say the women. The people in Atlanta, the mindsets of what Atlanta allows is by far the, the worst when it comes to monogamy. Yeah, I've heard it's that. Not, it's not a city that you want to come to where you're questioning what you want to do, your sexuality, anything, because they will be in situations where you're going to express that. So you need to know who you are. You know what I mean? You think you're going to express it. You want to express it. And it's not going to be good. 
So, so you said you're meeting church girls, Christian women that subscribe to that ideology. Well, I mean, absolutely. I, absolutely. And you know, it's the South, so nobody's perfect, but um, yeah. I just think there's certain, there's certain concepts in life that don't breed success. You know, so that, that's one of those things where I'm like, hey, it, 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 success is not going to happen. I'm sure you could find a special case. But generally speaking, I don't, at the end of the day, I want to honor God with my family, with my life. Mm-hmm. I want to help my wife toward going toward honoring her, her life with Christ. At the end of the day, that's what I'm trying to do. That's the goal. So being a man that's trying to walk this way, I'm not going to put myself in a situation or allow her to remain in a situation that's not that's not conducive to both of us that's good you know good. so it's, it's just it's not worth it at the end of the day granted yes can i live my can i live out you know childish fantasies or whatever for sure but at some point you got to grow up at some point you want you want what god wants for you so what do you say to women who said that they became that way because men just can't be faithful anyway so why expect um monogamy from a man when he's going to go cheat on you anyway. So why don't they just enjoy other women together? I mean, the reality is you're only going to marry one man. So you only need one man to meet those standards. And Mm. then also I would challenge every woman who says that you have the internet, you have access to this entire world. You're not stuck to the USA and you're not stuck to that one city. So you can go around. There's different men from different aspects who don't live by this foundation. But if you want to throw in the towel and make things easy for yourself and use that as an excuse, it's not all right. Mm, 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 mm. All right. So, Dozier, you're very public about your um, virginity. Um, right. You're a 30 year old virgin. Why have you decided to have a commitment with God that has lasted all the way to the age of 30 in the right. city where you see more fake booties than mannequins at a department store? Why That's is true. it? That- <laughs> Why is it that you have committed to God and surrendered your sexuality to him? Um, so I committed to God. I didn't even really want to. I landed in it when I was younger. And uh, it's a long story, but I landed in it. And I realized that, to be frank, I've as I've grown, I've understood that I don't have the luxury to be out and having sex and stopping. I really commend the people that can have sex once or twice and you good for like a month or two or whatever. <laughs> I I genuinely understand that I'll be out here in these streets. You feel me? Yeah. Like there's no stop. I complete, yeah. for instance, I have an understanding for people, for dudes that are like, yo, I just can't stop. You know, once I, once I start, you know, different women, I get it. I'm really that yeah. man, but I've understood that I needed, God had to stop me because I would have been out here in trouble. You know what I mean? So, in understanding my flaws, God has made it a strength in my life. Mm. But really, I'll be out here. I'll be out here Repeat that one more time. You said, understanding my flaws, God has made it a strength in my life. Right. Explain that to me. I think you need to unpack that because that was powerful. <laughs> so uh, by understanding my flaws, meaning that, hey, my sexual urges are, are probably very high. And I know that once I start something sexually, it's not going to stop at one woman. I know this yeah. for sure. It's just because I just want to feed myself. And to be honest, most men are like this. Yeah. Which, you know, most men are like this, so it's not abnormal. But because I understood that, I knew that I didn't have the luxury to just be out having sex and stopping. So when God stopped it for me and never let me get into it, I understood, hey, this is my safety because the damage I'll cause to others and myself would have been greater. So it's now become a strength in my life where when I meet women emotionally, I can connect to you. I can have a conversation with you. And also, I realize nonsense really fast before other people do. Because you operate in the spirit of clarity. Right. So she didn't she didn't do something that I like, you know, and I'm confused now. You know what I mean? Or I take yeah. a little longer to, to make a decision. So let me let me let me go back to this. And mm-hmm. if it's not um too intrusive you said that you landed in this you landed in this mindset of um protecting your virginity what do you mean by that so when i say that um when i first when i was younger probably around middle school the very first that i was a virgin i was lying 
all my homeboys was like, bro, did you hit yet? You know, what's up? What's up? And I was like, nah, I'm trying to be a virgin. You feel me? Everybody's like, yeah. oh, cool, cool. I respect that. I'm lying. I'm capping. You know, like, I know, I know good and well. I plan to be out here in these streets. I, I know this for sure, but I kept lying because I was just, I was, I was a little nervous. You know what I mean? You say you kept lying know. about what? You said you was a virgin. Right. Why, I was why, why you call it a lie? I, so I was a virgin, but I was telling them I'm waiting till marriage to get them off my back. Because everybody pressuring you like, bro, what's up? Did you hit yet? And I'm like, nah, I'm just waiting till marriage, you know? just And they're like, okay, cool. I respect that. To get them off my back. I was lying. I was not waiting till marriage. And then what happened was during my high school career, I, I don't make this up. Crazy stuff started happening. Like I was supposed to go to this party. Everybody's out having sex. I didn't know this was going on. Somehow, some way, my bus didn't come for hours. And this is a school bus. This ain't mm -hmm. regular bus. This that's kind of illegal. You can't be leaving a kid at school. This is my bus. <laughs> and it came hours later. And it just so happened that I couldn't get to the party in time. So I missed it. A lot of people lost at Virginia that day. I'm talking about there's times where me and a girl was supposed to link up and a car accident happened. Mm. And I'm like, so this is my life. Like this has literally happened in my entire high school career. And I'm like, bro, something's up. Like, why can't I do whatever? Okay, you know? I need to get this thing up and God won't let right. me over there blocking. Right. So by the time I got saved at 18, that's when it made sense. I was like, all right, it made sense because every time I try something crazy, some freak accident kept the current. So it finally clicked and made sense all at once. Hmm. And then, so at 18 years old, you started understanding the value of your sexuality. Right. So at 18, I actually planned to go to college and while out, I was like, yo, I've been, you know, I've been out here good in high school, freak accidents been happening, but I'm grown. I'm about to go to college, have me a little football scholarship. We about to wild out. And I got saved like at 18. Right. So I realized, I said, I see that God wants me to wait till marriage. And then that's when it made sense to me. But it didn't really start unraveling till later on, till um, really the sexual urges started coming in. And I understood. And I would say certain things to other dudes. We'd be having a conversation. And I'd be like, bro, y'all think that joint's weird? I'm like, bro, that's pretty normal. I, I ain't got no problem with that. That's when I started realizing that I was a little different. You know what I mean? I was like, all right. So I see. I see what's going on. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. And then I understood, like, yeah, I get it. Like, I would be out here compared to yeah. some other dudes. So what do you say? Did you ever run into women that say, are oh, you 30 years old? You're a virgin. Uh, you must be gay. You got to be gay. Plus, you live in Atlanta. So that just all makes sense right. in the world to me. Honestly, I've, I've never run into that. Um, not in Atlanta. I mean, granted, women don't see me and think I'm a virgin. So that's another <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? So I don't. They, 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 if they know, they barely will, you know, and, um, yeah, so now nah, I don't want to have that question about women said questioning my sexuality or whatnot. They normally think I'm for the streets when they meet me. So it's a big, <laughs> it's a big difference. You feel me? <laughs> and so what do, uh, do you find women trying to come on to you from, uh, sexually? Right. So it's the wildest thing. I, I've met women that have been like, yo, um, I'm in an open marriage, but you know, which, if what you trying to do, you feel me? All I want you to do is buy me gifts. I don't make this up, yo. I don't make this up while we out. Like I've I've met situations where I've I've met a lot of married women, but I've met women that rolled up to me like, yo, what's up? Like I'm just trying to hit for the night. We never gotta talk again. <laughs> we never gotta talk again, yo. I've had that a lot, so it's. You tell me you pull up, you pull up at you. You 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 at like what type of place? Are you at the grocery store or you? Oh no 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 no! I was coming. I was coming from a party for sure. I was definitely coming from a party. Party ended and um, we was leaving outside. Mind you, I was with my family. Shorty pulls up like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> I'll make this up. She's like, "Hey, what's up? How you doing, Keith? Yo, I'm trying to take you home tonight. Like, I'm like, nah, I'm good." She's like, "Look, you never have to see me again, but you fine." Yo, like, I don't. So they think I'm for the streets. Like I've had made, <laughs> they think I'm for the streets. So it's it's wild. I said you never have to see me again. Never have seen me. You know that was New York though. Girls oh, yeah, in New York New will York. say that. It's straight up, straight up. Yeah, no, they'll say that no in New York. <laughs> they'll say that in New York. And so when you're dating a girl, 
uh, what's the longest relationship you've been in? Um, let's say in the last five years. The last five. Or have years. you been in relationships? Have you been in relationships in the last five years? I have. I think my last relationship was like seven months. Okay. Yeah, it was, was like that somebody you thought you were gonna marry? Yes, it's somebody I thought I was gonna marry, but um. One, I'm not trying to be dating for mad long. And um, yeah. if I realize it's not going to work out, I'm not, we not, we don't need to sit here and try and get a trophy for four years in a relationship. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's okay. We adults now. So um, if I realize it's not working, like, hey, we can, we can gracefully end it. And it was, it was a respectful, graceful thing. Our values were just a little different. Uh, when the closer we started getting to it. So we just realized it was just better to end it. Mm. Mm. Was that a hard breakup for you? Uh, not, really, not really. Not really. We was going through, we was going through some stuff, you know. We was going through, <laughs> nah, we was going really through some stuff. And I was yeah. like, yo, we gotta, I was like, we gotta uh we had to make an adult decision. Put it that way. We had to make an adult decision. So leaning back on when you say it's hard to find a wife, hmm. are you speaking of geographically or just a type of women because i meet a lot of amazing women that are wifey material um what are you finding out there are you just find the majority of women that's just not or you just find a compatibility issue or like what what are you finding when you say it's hard to because i'm telling you there's gonna be women right now that's gonna slide in your dms when this episode airs and they're gonna say i'm a wife so what's up dozier um Hey, take a look at me. This is what I do. This is who I am. They're going to connect with you from a moral standpoint, because on the Dear Future Wifey podcast, we have some very solid uh, women that that follow this podcast, quality, quality women. And I want to tap into a lot more men so that I can do some love connections or whatnot, because it's a lot of dope women. And so when you say that, I know it's going to trigger them and say, why can I find a guy like this? Because they're finding the type of guys that's uh, parallel to the women that you're finding. And here you are finding the women to the male counterparts that they're finding. So they always ask me, how can these people connect? How can these good men meet these great women? So what is it that you're finding out there in these dating streets mm -hmm. when you say it's hard to find a wife? Um, so honestly, what I meet is I meet a lot of women that are okay with who I am on the surface level. But when it comes down to Honestly, the fact that I love God on my Christian walk, it's not the same. You feel me? Really? Yeah. Like, um, I guess because they see me, they don't see that I'm a Christian. So they're cool with, uh, and, and don't get me wrong. It's, it's not even, it's not even like they're not saved or whatnot. Um, but yeah. when I tell them like, yo, I, I'm fasting, I'm going into prayer, you know, like, Hey, I'm not cool with this. I know we have fun. I, you know, all this, but I'm not, I'm not cool with that. I'm not cool with this. Or for instance, I'm not cool with, I'm not sitting down smoking weed for this long or whatever. Like I'm not, I'm not out here popping bottles, a bunch of Henny all the time getting yeah. drunk. I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? So when it comes to certain things like this, granted, I don't care if you drink, you know, like I'm not tripping, but I'm going to hold you accountable for getting drunk all the time. If you lick, yeah, you know what I mean? You yeah, you should. So I've realized when it comes down to certain things like that, they'll be like, well, I want to get drunk my whole life. Well, I feel you, sweetheart. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it's like it's like the little foundations. Or when I'm like, hey, look, I'm going to church. Like I'm a. I know. I know we was out Friday, but I'm going to church on Sunday. Like I'm going. I'm going to. My, I'm going there. It's it's not a question. It's like, yeah. well, you know, you know, I'm good or whatever. And these are certain things that I'm just like, nah, I'm not. I'm not doing that because I'm going to grow my faith. And I, I've tell, told plenty of women, if I ever get watered down in mission walk, I would advise you to leave because I'm going to mm. be out in the streets. You know what I mean? Out of all respect for them. Good. And I'm like, you don't want the watered down me. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want yeah. this watered down version of Christ because I know myself. So I need this. Yes. You may not, but I need this, you know? Yeah. So... That's good. That's good that you can hold yourself accountable and you're telling them to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever experienced dating a solid, strong Christian woman? Have you experienced that? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And what have you found in that? Um, it was amazing. It was amazing. I, I've I've run into some amazing women in my life. Like I don't even want this podcast to, or this episode to seem like I haven't. I've run into some amazing, beautiful women, and it was it was great. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was beautiful. So. So what do you think is the overall? I know. See, a lot of times people just think you're a Christian. She's a Christian. Hey, y'all equally yoked. Y'all should be able to right. be together and have a family, have kids and get married and all that good stuff. Um, but I want you to put some context around that. Um, first of all, that's absolutely foolishness, of course. But uh, what do you say about that when you say I met these amazing women, but it just didn't work out? What do I say about it or what caused yeah. it? Yeah, what caused it? Like you, you have these great Christian women, uh, y'all connecting on different levels. Uh, what would you say was the disconnect? Why couldn't it go to the "Will you marry me"? Right. So honestly, I'm, if I'm gonna be real with you, I'm gonna sound real Christian when I say this. <laughs> I prayed about it. I and prayed God about said it. No. And God said no. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's yep. it. And if I had my choice, I would have married would them. actually two women. I would have married them. Yep. God said no, and. I'd be a fool to battle God. That's real. You know, I'm scared of what happened. So I'm like, look, yeah. I'll catch this L. Yeah. But that's it. That's real. That's real. Uh, and I was hoping that was the response because at the end of the day, when you do meet somebody that's solid and you connecting, and I had a homegirl that said she she wanted this guy so bad. This guy loved her, wanted her, and she prayed and asked God about it. And God said no. Right. She was like, what? Why know tough. about this? And it's just, and it sounds like a cop out. You go tell a woman, God told me not to marry you. He like, uh, she like, well, this see, that's why I like the church folks. You Christian <laughs> men the crap. They just be lying for no apparent reason. Uh, but the reality is, is that you do have to be true to God. And if God is really the person that's going to play Cupid in your life, then you have to submit to His will. Um, I don't ever want to. I'm curious to know what you want in a woman. But um, I don't want you to really release that and um, and actually tell all your little secret sauce. But from a surface level, what mm-hmm. would you say? Uh, God is open to truly love God. Beautiful and balanced in the head. The hardest thing to find, yo. <laughs> Hold thing. on, repeat one, repeat one more time. This stream yard was cutting out a little bit. You said you want a woman that's what? Or a woman that loves God or open to loving God. Um, beautiful, of course. We're not gonna we're not gonna get into in the specification of beauty right now. I don't feel like dealing with that, but uh <laughs> but uh balance and balanced mindset. So the balanced mindset is the whole thing by by far. Like it's hard, I've realized, and I'm speaking very general, but it's not easy. For some people to just be like, yo, A plus B equals C. And that's something I kind of need because I understand myself. And for instance, I need somebody balanced enough to tell me, yo, I'm wilding. Because I move very confidently in what I'm doing. And I somebody be like, yo, this is wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't need, if I'm with somebody and they sit down, there's certain people that sit down. There's nothing against you. Who you internalize it. You're not going to like me because I be moving. I need somebody that's kind of going to just have a conversation with me or if I'm doing something that's a little bit too wrong, just let me know. Yo, you all in. I have no problem understanding that I'm wrong. But if you're yeah. the type of person that just sits in it and you, you just let it build up, you're not going to like me because I move proudly in whatever I'm doing confidently. Yeah, That's just how God made me. I'm moving confidently. So I can confidently be very wrong. <laughs> you know, like I can, I understand this. I completely understand myself with this. So, you know, I, I need somebody just not, you just and you don't even it doesn't have to be no argument nothing if i'm wilding i'm wilding it's very simple you yeah. know yeah but um or balanced enough to know like hey i know if i'm if i'm out here having sex with girls men are not going to want to take me seriously yeah. balanced enough to understand that you know what i mean yeah 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 that's good well um so do you see yourself i i, I like when you said earlier that um, it's not going to take you long. You're not out here wanting to date a woman for a long time. And then, you know, it's three, four, five years later. And then you finally say, oh, I don't think you're the person I'm supposed to be with. Or even then, even marrying or proposing to her five years later. 
in your perfect world, how long do you think it's going to take you to decide or hear from God that this is your wife? In my, in a perfect world. Perfect world. In a perfect world, I want to know in like the first week or two. In a perfect world. Mm. Now, why do you say I, that? Now, hold on. Why you say that the first the first week or two? Why? Because in the first week or two, if it's a perfect world, then I want to cut all ties with anything or anybody else that I may know. Um, just clean house. I'd rather move accordingly to to make her my wife as soon as possible. And when I mean by make my wife, I mean of course date her. But if I knew early on. Yeah, there's certain things that I would just make adjustments to. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So, yeah, I know exactly wow. what you're talking about. And you said, you said, now it's not like you're gonna go try to propose to in the first week, but right. um, you said what? You want to actually court her and and do what? Yeah, I would absolutely, I would absolutely court her for some time just to make sure because she can be it, but we still might have to iron some things out prior to marriage. And if uh, one thing I know that when you get married, it's a lot harder to change certain things. Mm. So mm. prior to that, we could just talk about certain things we need to iron out, sexual expectations, expectations to a marriage, or if not even expectations, just what she likes, what I like, where we want to live, what city, what state. These are certain things we you want to talk about prior to marriage. Like you need practicality and common sense. You know what I'm going to go in prayer for you about is for us to change that mindset. I know it's hard for not mindset, but the reality mm -hmm. that you faced about it's been hard to find a wife. Um, and you know what? You finna, <laughs> you finna be bombarded. First of all, you get a lot of DMs from a lot of women. Uh, generally, I, I mean, I, I kind of do generally forget, you know. Do you respond? Do you respond? I barely respond to any DMs. Wow. But here's the reason. If I'm interested, I definitely would. Okay. If, how do, if I'm how, how, I how do you would. so how do you how how does how do you show interest if you I mean okay so you do read your DMs then at least. Yes. yes. Okay good because I don't want I want to make sure it's not like your cell phone where it's all these messages that you haven't oh, responded no, no, no. I definitely do. All right. So I'm going to say that I know for a fact it's going to be some women sliding your DMs and women, I'm telling you that the simple way to approach a man is just simply say something that you liked about what, you know, something he said in this podcast that resonated with you and strike up conversation. I always believe that a woman should, I mean, a man should pursue a woman, but a woman has to make herself known. And, um, and all you gotta do is just call him and say, Hey, I saw your episode. You know, that episode is very powerful. I like when you said X, Y, Z, and then he'll do the rest. Right. Those A, is that, is that right. good advice? That's very yeah. fair, and that's good advice. Great advice. Well, he's he, he going to go check out your Instagram. He's going to look. If you got some video where you're sharing content, he's going to listen to you, see how you how you, how you you talk in your Instagram lives or whatever content you're sharing. He's going to look. At, first of all, I'm not going to tell him what you're going to do because I think I'm telling him myself. I'm, I'm going to say, what do you do when a woman approaches you in, in, in your DMs? Me? Honestly, uh, first thing I'm doing, I'm looking at your page. So Exactly. If you're private, like, yo, that's already a, a big how, how I'm gonna do that, you know? <laughs> you private, yo, you a ghost. Like, how I'm gonna do that? So unless your profile picture really that fire, it's like yeah. you know what I mean? I yep. mean it's hard to it's hard to gamble like that. But um I'm definitely gonna go through your post. Um I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna see what type of pictures you want the world to see of you. There for sure. Is. So um I'm looking at what you what you post and I, it lets me know how you are in your head because one thing about us is men, we can tell how you based on what you wear. Talk about it. So I'm going to definitely look at that and understand. About you. I don't even have to read your comments like that. You're going to look at pictures. You said, repeat that again because the audio cut out a little bit. You said that you can tell what? I said, as as men, we can tell who a woman is based on the pictures you post and based on what you wear. So we can easily break down and we automatically understand your desire for attention, your insecurities, because you wear, you're wearing it. And this is how a lot of times we as men decide about a wife from a girlfriend without even approaching you or having a conversation. Now, I'm, I'm not saying, of course, that's crazy, but what I am saying is that I'm not saying dress crazy or really uptight, but what I am saying is that we are looking at you and making an assessment. 
100%. And it's a fair assessment. I mean, it's, it's advertised and they do it in every ad. If they want to mm-hmm. sell some nice liquor, they're going to get a woman, have her scantily clad, and they're going to sell that, you know, uh, sex sales. So if your social media is selling uh, sex and then you keep saying, why are these men always sending me D pics all the time? Because like you're sending, look at what your representation is. Most women that uh, represent themselves very classy. A lot of men don't even approach them like that. Right. And you may get some one-off crazy people that do that, but the average man, they're going to come to you and be like, how you doing, queen? You know, you looking great, queen. They're going to come to you and they're going to they gonna step to you from a standpoint of class and respect because you represented yourself very respectful. So I'm glad that you actually touched on that and uh, saying how men make an assessment based upon the appearance of a woman, um, how she's dressed or undressed for that matter. <laughs> so, right. so that's real. Um, Dozier, what you got going on? No, first of all, I didn't even touch on what you do for a living because you're a highly intelligent man. What is your profession? Oh, so I'm actually a chemist, a research and development chemist. Uh, I want y'all yeah. to hear that. Y'all don't hear that, women. Did you hear what this man does? This black man is what? What are you again, Dozier? <laughs> I'm a chemist, a research and development a freaking chemist. chemist. A freaking chemist. So you got to be the first chemist I've ever met in my entire life. Well, amen. Uh, my, that, uh, yeah. My my goddaughter, she graduated from school uh, with a chemistry uh, chemistry degree, and she wants to focus on uh, perfumes and fragrances and all that type okay. of stuff. And she says a very hard business to break into. Um, yeah. So is it really? Initially, yeah, depending on if, especially if you're not trying to travel uh, or go to another city. If certain cities are the yeah. hot spots, other cities are not. You need experience. Is that why you've been moving around a lot? No, I just moved because I I don't have any kids. And after about two years, I, I'll take a trip and leave the city, you know? <laughs> I'll, I'll leave the city. I've, I'll live life without regrets. Like, I, I've done things, you know, just explored, did whatever. Why not? Have you made up your mind what city you want to settle down with your wife and family? I don't. And honestly, um, I really don't. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me, but I'm not. It's not that. <laughs> it matters to me because if she lives in some country city, sweetheart, yo, we not in the country no more. You know what I mean? <laughs> we not in Kansas no more. But um, you have to relocate, huh? Right. But I'm, I'm, I'm very open, you know, because once I'm married, it really doesn't matter. Not like that. Yeah. That's good. But Delzi, anything you want people to know about you, make sure that y'all follow him on his uh, Instagram page. I'm going to drop the the IG handle uh, right here on the screen. Do you have a YouTube yet? I do. I do. have. I have a whole YouTube channel. I had that before. What's your YouTube channel? YouTube channel is called Falling Forward. Uh, It's actually, well, it's my name. Dozy, Dozy Azima, Dozy Azima. And uh, you'll find it. It's titled Falling Forward. All right, and I'll put a link in the description for that. Uh, any parting words you would uh, any parting words you like to say to the audience, my homie? I say, I say at the end of the day, uh, in general, there are good men out here. You know, there's good men out here. For some reason, I agree with what was said prior. For some reason, it's hard for good men to meet good women. Like I don't know what it is, yeah. but we just we miss each other all the time. And I think it's because there's so much bad in the way we kind of get. We kind of get muffled out. But at the end of the day, just stand strong. You know, God got you. Especially if you truly trust God, then you know for sure he's going to bless you. That's real. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, listen, y'all give it up for my homeboy, Dozier Azima, on the Dear Future Wife podcast. Brother, it was great having you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, I normally prefer having people in studio when I uh, do the podcast. But like I said, I've been trying to get my boy in for a while so i said you know what let's go ahead and get him in on zoom well here's my favorite part of the podcast where i manifest my future wifey so uh here we go dear future wifey i'm sitting at my computer and allowing my mind to be whisked away with the fantasy of vacationing with you destination forever our hearts will take flight the day our eyes lock Tickets by way of a signed marriage license and a stamp by the city clerk is the passport signifying we arrived. This is holy matrimony. We're gleefully at the terminal. Let's board Holy Spirit Airlines. Now, I got to be specific because Spirit Airlines, well, um, no comment. My love, 
Make our love journey just that, a journey. Gazing upon beautiful sunsets during lovemaking, traveling down rocky terrain when there's discord, sailing across calm seas as peace fills our home. We'll weather every storm, safety in each other's arms as we lay at the feet of Jesus. We'll voyage to the holy of holies and find rest for our souls. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.